I am Jeffrey Wilson. And I am Candace Coleman. And welcome to the, the Daily, Daily Mix. Mix. How was your weekend? It I was, haven't seen you in a little bit. It was fantastic. WrestleMania weekend, brother. You, you cannot so beat it with a bat. I, I can't. You come on, it's WrestleMania. I've been watching yeah, it since I, I was a kid. I follow you on Facebook, so. It's 30, WrestleMania 32. I'm running here. So I've been watching it for a long time. Like, where do they perform? Like, where do you uh, this year it was Dallas, Texas. Oh. Von Erich country, and I know you know who the Von Erichs are. Yeah, I know. I no, know. I don't. Yeah, okay. <laughs> did you ever like have this like? Did you ever wrestle or like? I you wrestled have like amateur wrestling, and I also made a little title belt when I was a kid. No kidding. Yeah. Is that I what you dress issues. up for Halloween every year? No, no. I kind of. I would say I grew out of it, but I kind of didn't a little bit. Sweet. I know. Well, I went roller skating. Well, as long so as you enjoyed yourself. That's what I did. Long yeah, you my son loves it. Good deal. A little therapy, from what I hear. We do the same thing every Friday night. Gotta love it. All right, I guess we should get the show started. Let's get started. All right. Hey, everyone, did you hear the National Geospatial Intelligence mm. Agency announced last week plans to stay in St. Louis? Absolutely. Now, this is great news for the city, ladies and gentlemen. It means more than 3,000 jobs will remain right here in St. Louis. In March, the city offered the NGA free land to build their new headquarters in North St. Louis. Since then, NGA officials had been deciding between the North St. Louis land and a site in St. Clair County, Illinois, near Scott Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. Now, construction on the $1.6 billion facility is expected to begin next January. The current location in South St. Louis will remain open throughout the transition. And I love it. 3,000 jobs. I That's mean, we cool. are like, this market is turning around. This is great And we've needed it. The whole country's been really slow the last several years, so a big shot in the arm as far as job-wise. All right, St. Louis. So, do you like apps? I do, and I also do like, like eating. Eat? I do. I got one that'll pay you to download it. Oh, we're gonna have to holler at this guy, Mr. Scott Hunley, a little later on. I know, I'm excited. All right, now let's get to today's Daily Mix. Miss Candace, let me ask you a question that is quite ubiquitous here in the St. Louis area. I'm sure I've Where, heard it before. Where'd you go to high school? I went to Parkway West, home of the Longhorns. Parkway West. All right. Well, see, this is a question, obviously, that's asked quite frequently. But yes. St. Louis, as we know, is known for this question. It also is an inspiration for a new exhibit of the same name, currently on display at the Missouri History Museum. It's about time because the St. Louis area has such a large and diverse number of schools over the last 200 years, people have used this question to make connections, and in some cases, stereotypes, when meeting someone for the very first time in 200 years. That's I did not time. know that question was That's around that long. That's a long time. Now, thanks to this exhibit developed by Teens Make History Exhibitors, you'll be, you'll be able to view some of the buildings, traditions, sports, and more that have shaped St. Louis high schools. And you'll also be able to reflect on your own high school experiences, and you'll even have a chance to answer that age-old question. Mm -hmm. Now, the exhibit promises to offer a unique perspective on St. Louis high schools, past and present, and is on display through July 17th. And the play of the same name will also be performed each Saturday at 11.30 a.m. through April 30th. Admission to both are free. For more information, visit mohistory.org slash high school. Mm -hmm. And where did you go to high school? I'm not from here, but I went to a school in Davenport, Iowa called North High School, home of the Wildcats. Wow! <laughs> I like do that again. That was, ow, that, was, ow. that was cute. Kind of a sick cat a little bit. Let's get that cat to the vet. Anyway. Oh, anyway, work do for you me. happen to use Twitter? I do. I do in my uh, work, uh, obviously, and my job, but not so much. It's um, everywhere. You anymore, know, in my obviously. personal, like more Facebook. Right. I got you. I feel you. Well, St. Louis's own Mayor Francis Slay was recently named <laughs> one of top 25 mayors who have mastered Twitter by the marketing firm Development Counselors International. It's very cool. The DCI team followed a three step selection process, starting with looking at the mayors of the 250 largest cities in America. Uh, no, absolutely. Now, any mayors with less than 1,000, they're out of there. Followers were eliminated, but narrowing the field down to 110 mayors. Their next step was to analyze the Twitter activity of each mayor over a 60-day period, scoring them based on their followers, 
frequency of posts, responsiveness, engagement, very important, and influence. Mm -hmm. Now from there, they have their list of 25 mayors who have mastered Twitter, naming them the Elite Tweet. That is so cute. Mayor Slay the came in. The Tweet Elite, I apologize. The Tweet Elite, either way, it works both ways. Mayor Slay came in at number seven among those elite tweeters with over 49,000 followers and more than 22,000 tweets. Impressive. Way to go. Now, if you haven't already followed that gentleman, Mayor Slay, Twitter, at Mayor Slay. Uh, very good. So do you wonder, do you think he really does it? Or do you think his like communications director I would does like it? to think he's too busy handling St. Louis business to do that. Because they have like actors and stuff, they have like their publicists do it. So you never know. He might be really a man of the people reaching out and actually doing his own personal tweets. We never I know. I think he's media savvy. I'll say he does. Oh, there you go. All right, well, here's some tweet worthy news. After much anticipation, the National Blues Museum opened its doors this weekend. Mm -hmm. The Normandy High School marching band kicked off the grand opening with a musical procession followed by remarks from museum officials and Mayor Slay and the, official, about it. and the official ribbon cutting ceremony which he could have tweeted about. Of course he did. Visitors enjoyed live entertainment throughout the day as they explored the 23,000 square foot facility that houses everything from a mixing booth and other interactive technology to historical and educational exhibits. Mm -hmm. The museum also has a multifunctional space for performances and events that can accommodate up to 450 guests. So cool. And this was the second grand opening on Washington in just over a week. Mm -hmm. Sugar Fire Smokehouse, which happens to be located inside the museum, opened their newest location to the delight of the Minnie Masses. And these are two great new reasons to head to Washington Avenue. You can find out more about both destinations by visiting their websites, nationalbluesmuseum.org and sugarfiresmokehouse.com. And I have been dying to go there. And I literally over the last like month, I've heard nothing but amazing things about Sugar Fire. Super generous portions, amazingly good, take a huge nap afterward food. I got to check it out. Oh, I'm getting really, really hungry. <laughs> Sadly though, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to bid a final farewell well yes. to Crestwood Plaza. Crestwood Plaza has been a local landmark since it opened in 1957, but it's sat empty since closing in 2013. Absolutely. I can't believe it's been that long. Yeah, it's like malls are like ghost houses all I over the know. country. But the city of Crestwood and the St. Louis Food Truck Association are preparing to say goodbye in a very big way. The food truck party at the plaza will celebrate the old Crestwood Plaza Mall as the city prepares for its demolition next month to make way for a new multi-million dollar development, including retail, dining, and housing. Mm -hmm. Now on Saturday, April 16th, the mall parking lot will be full of life. Once again, Love 26 it. food 26. trucks, two beer trucks, my wow. style, <laughs> and Kids Corner with games and activities will be on the site from 11 a.m. to dusk with live music from Joe Dirt and the Dirty, Dirty Boys Band from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. <laughs> On-site parking will be available and attendees are encouraged to bring their own long chair. Just don't bring any outside food or drinks and leave your pets at home. You can find out more by visiting the city of Crestwood on Facebook and maybe even Twitter. Maybe even tweet about it. That sounds pretty cool. I'm going to go check that out. I like yeah. the good food trucks. But 26 though, I mean, that is a food truck party. And you can get your sample on it. And like two beer trucks, I mean, I only need one, but two, that's solid. And that's fun to bring kids. So you can bounce from truck to truck Absolutely. to truck. Absolutely. So, and it's cheap, you know, inexpensive. And it's a good way to say, you know, goodbye to the Crestwood, to Plaza. Crestwood Plaza. While it's sad to see Crestwood yes, Plaza is. go, it is good to know that new businesses will be bringing life back to the area. That is true. And when it comes to business, St. Louis is a great place to be. According to the audit, tax, and advisory firm KPMG, mm -hmm. St. Louis is among the top 10 most cost-friendly cities to do business with. Mm -hmm. Now, St. Louis came in at number nine on the list, getting props for having the lowest effective corporate income tax rate. All right. We also have the lowest electricity. I had no idea. Who knew? Who would have thunk? And the second lowest industrial lease cost of the 31 cities studied. Now, Kansas City rounded out the list at number 10, making Missouri the only state to have two cities on the list. Boot, boot. Oh, look at you. You're fire tonight. Look at you. KPMG is a true testament to our ranking. Just last fall, plans were announced to expand its St. Louis office, adding 175 informational technology jobs over mm. the next three years. So this is like really great news. And you know, St. Louis keeps making. More jobs? More yeah. Jobs? I'm and they keep it. making all these top 10 lists. I mean, literally in the last month and a half, I think we talked about a top 10 list. So St. Louis is on. The city is fire. back, baby, back. The Sugar city. Fire.
That's what I'm talking about. Now, the Kentucky Derby is coming up next month, and that means some exciting news for Across the Board, a St. Louis family business that specializes in handcraft and unique wooden board games. I still love this story. I dig it, I dig it. They've been licensed by the Kentucky Derby, Derby and Churchill Downs to produce the official horse racing board game for the event. Sounds very, very, very cool. Now, the game is already in production and will be ready uh, by race day on May 7th. Check out acrosstheboardgame.com for more information about this cool local business. Now you got kids, do you sit down and play board games? We do a little more video games related lately, but we do occasionally break out the, you know, I guess Streets and Ladders is why a little You're too far back. You're an operation. Operation, absolutely. And Monopoly would go for hours. See, I like to play Life and Monopoly too. It seems a little more advanced for the eight year old though. But, yeah, but know. with the video games though, you don't really talk other than, you know, oh, you might untrue, cheer. Untrue, untrue. Okay. I'm Okay, we're coming missions. over to your house. All right, all right, we're coming over to your house. I'm a Love gamer. it. High 44 in Fenton was recently named as the best co working space in St. Louis by Symmetry 50. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're not familiar with this operation, co working spaces are shared working environments, often like a typical office, but they are geared toward the self employed and small business professionals. High 44 makes the list for being fresh and energetic mm -hmm. and providing a physical environment that allows the professionals using it to focus on their business without worrying about the high cost of having an office. Very, very cool concept. High 44 includes everything from copier and workspace to meeting rooms and storage. You can learn more about it at thehive44.com. And I love it because, you know, you, when you really think about it, because I've had my own business before, I mean, buying the supplies and the store, I mean, it would really No, it's a back. big head. It's a big chunk of overhead not to have to worry about office, literal office, physical office, office space. You can kind of use it as you need. And I think it's a cool And the coolest cool cities have these concepts. So St. Louis. Louis, there you go. And you knew, you knew there was going to be a basketball story. And, I, and once again, I got nothing. But Champions Basketball League will be hosting its first ever game in St. Louis this Sunday. Mm -hmm. Over 25 former NBA players, all-stars, champions, and Hall of Famers will be heating up the core eating up the court Look at, at, you. at Chaffetz Arena. Throughout the day, there will be live bands, a free pre-game kids shoot around with players, mm. and autograph opportunities. Very cool. Proceeds from the event will benefit the Stuart Scott Memorial Cancer Research Fund at the V Foundation, along with other St. Louis charities. And St. Louis's own Larry Hughes will be on the scene. The fun starts at 4 p.m. And you can find out all about the details at championshoops.com. So what you got? I think it's just so cool. We talked about this before. St. Louis, a lot of their local athletes, you know, Hughes, they just, they bring such cool stuff back to the city. Helping with the kids, the community, gotta love it. Okay, so my question is this, with the Rams gone, do you mm -hmm. think we're, you know, ramping up basketball, basketball because of that? I don't know. When was the last time we had a basketball team here? Was it the Hawks, the St. Louis Hawks back in the day? You're asking me? I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, that's I'm right. I'm really talking to myself. Too, oh, so. <laughs> there you go. SIUE's Mississippi River Festival is being revived thanks to Dave <clears throat> Thomason, the owner of Carmen Concerts. The Summer Music Festival was a fan favorite from 1969 to 1980 on the Edwardsville, Illinois campus. Absolutely. Several popular groups, including The Who, 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 Chicago, The Eagles, and Grateful Dead played this outdoor concert series over the years. Oh, this must have been so cool. The first show will feature Pure Prairie League, known for the hit song Amy, on Saturday, May 21st in the Meridian Ballroom. That's right. Now, in June, Poco. Poco will also perform in the ballroom, and a third concert will take place at the Vadala Bean Center. That's I didn't good. want to massacre that pronunciation. I That's hope like I got it right. That's a five dollar word. However, Thomason says he hopes to eventually move it back outdoors, which I think would be super, super cool. He plans to feature classic rock acts as well as feature country, blues, and bluegrass stars. Mm -hmm. You can find out more about the Mississippi River Festival visited at CarmenConcerts.com. And so the out I mean the outdoor that gives it kind of that like woodstocky, you know, Bonnaroo type. Throw down that feel. little bluegrass. Da -da 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 -da. And SIUE is like, you know, not very far away. No, so no, no. My, our, our parents like did that. Wow. Good music. You can't beat it with a bat. Okay. Now, for over 30 years, Steven Spielberg's masterpiece E.T. has been entertaining audiences of all ages. Mm -hmm. Now, this weekend, you can experience the beloved film in a whole new way at Powell Hall. The St. Louis Symphony will perform John Williams Academy award-winning score live as E.T. plays on the big screen. So, so, so cool. very cool. You can be a part of this magic, ladies and gentlemen, this Friday and Saturday at 7 p.m. or Sunday at 2 p.m. For more information, visit STLSymphony.com. 
symphony.org. And what a great way to bring kids and introduce them to the symphony. I mean, I love what the symphony has been doing. Oh, yeah. And E.T., that's just like a time-honored classic for no, kids. I Hopefully the kids cry. won't. Do I you? still cry. I do. Yeah. I'm sorry. E.T. went home. He had to go home. <laughs> this tax season has left your wallet feeling a little lighter. A local restaurant has a unique offer just for you. Oh, now check this out. On tax day, ladies and gentlemen, the Hard Rock Cafe is going to give you a chance to sing for your supper. Those who are brave enough to sing a song on the Hard Rock stage will receive a free legendary burger. That is right. Over the last two years, Hard Rock Cafe has given away thousands of burgers <laughs> on tax day. You can sing for your supper on Friday, April April 15th from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. at Hard Rock Cafe St. Mm. Louis in Union Station. For more information, visit hardrock.com slash St. Louis. Mm. All right, now, you like apps. I do. I got one. Useful apps, not just any app, a useful app. I got one you'll sink your teeth into. Oh, did you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> That's why she makes the big bucks. Right here, folks. This gentleman? Scott. Scott. With Oprah. No, I'm sorry. He, he, this is a gentleman. He started the app Oprah. It helps you streamline your dining operation. He's going to tell us all about it, what prompted it, and tell us what it's all about. For sure. Well, thanks for coming on the show, sir. Thank you for Scott, having me. Scott, welcome. You are a good friend of my friend, Julie Lally. So, Absolutely. and she has been doing nonstop bragging about Oprah. So tell us about the app, because it wasn't that it. long ago, and you just like hit the ground, and you skyrocketed. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, Oprah stands for Order, Pay, Earn, Redeem. It's Clever. what you can do with the app. Um, so picture an app on your phone, which you can order food for takeout or delivery, or you can actually go into a restaurant and pay using your phone. So instead of credit card or cash, you know, giving, the, giving that to the server, waiting for them to do their thing, bring it back, all that, you just pay right off of your phone. And uh, the best part is for users, you earn, as a user, you earn 5% back on everything you order or pay for with Oprah. Now, how and does that work? So it pays to you, Oprah. Yeah, so how does that work? Do, like, yeah. Do you send a check like once a month, or how does it work? Or no, is it, like, so it's all stored on the app, and uh, oh, you can then, cool. I know, it's a great time to be alive. Yeah. So you can then take that, uh, that balance that you have and go into, you know, use those rewards to order food at any of the 150 restaurants. So we've got about 150 restaurants throughout St. Louis, all over the place, from St. Charles to St. Peter's to Chesterfield, Downtown Clayton, The Loop, South City, wow. Soulard, You're all, all, the bases. all over the place. Cool. Absolutely, absolutely. And some huge St. Louis, uh, you know, favorites, stuff like Cicero's and Blueberry Hill. And wow. And some new guys like Rabada and working on places like Sugarfire. Yeah, and, buddy. Uh, you know, um, stuff like the Libertine and, you know, to, wow. to Subways, to Wing Zones. Oh, I mean, wow. we, we cover it. So any anything where people want to eat is where we want to be. So how was it embraced when you first came up with the idea for the app and then, I mean, that's a lot of restaurants to give the pitch. Yeah, so. absolutely, absolutely. Uh, restaurants have been super receptive um, because we're, you know, free for restaurants to use. We don't yeah. charge a commission or a fee cool. or Now, do they normally like charge, like, restaurants, like other apps, yeah, maybe I mean, not if as you, cool as yours? If you, but yeah, clearly not like as cool as Oprah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but even the name is just so cool. Yeah, generally those other companies that have, you know, delivery, you know, do delivery or they have their own app, you know, you can order food from. Sure. That's their business model is based on taking a percentage from the restaurant. Right. Well, we wanted to figure out how to go beyond just just convenience okay. and incentivize people to order. So that's where the 5% in rewards comes in. Okay. And then we wanted to go beyond, you know, figure out how to provide this service for restaurants, but make it free for them, you know, not, not become another bill that they have to pay. Okay. So there are so many apps out there. So how do you stand out from the crowd? So like as far as marketing or getting it out there? Yeah. So um, obviously the 5% rewards is our, is our big standout. You know, who nice else one, is going to offer you sure. money to to, to go eat more at the restaurants you're already eating at. Right. Oprah will. Um, and, uh, and beyond that, it's super convenient. So again, you can order food for takeout or delivery, or you can actually go into the restaurant and use the app to, uh, to pay for your meal. Okay, um, so you, can you get it on the iPhone? Can you get it on Android? Yes, we're on Android, we're on iPhone. So if you uh, just go to the app store, you would just search for Oper, O-P-E-R, and uh, download the app. And uh, we're trying to get as many people to sign up as we possibly can. How so many do you have now? We've got about 7,200 people. Oh, uh, that's up, pretty uh, impressive. That are, when did you launch the, uh, again? Uh, at the end of October. Okay, end so, of October. Yeah, pretty short amount of time. We've been able to uh, sign up about 150 restaurants and uh, 
you know, gotten 7,200 users and we're adding restaurants literally every single day. So that number I gave you right now, it's probably wrong because our guys are out there signing up restaurants all the time, adding them on to, uh, to the app, signing up, you know, folks throughout St. Louis. Um, so is this, is this as per your market research, when you got this started, is this something you notice popping up throughout the country and like bigger picture in game? If not, are you looking to tap into other markets outside of St. Louis? Yeah, absolutely looking to expand throughout the United States and throughout the world. Why not? You know, we have, uh, we have big goals and, and big dreams, but um, our founder, uh, Dave and myself, were both from here in St. Louis. You guys were talking about uh, earlier what high school you're from, Parkway Central. Ah, uh, another Parkway. Ah, so, when did you graduate? Uh, 97. Oh, you're just a baby. Oh, All right, Scott. Thank you. So I appreciate on that note, it. Where do we find you? Like, how do we find out more? Just go to the App Store? Yeah, go to the App Store, or you can find us online, learn more at paywithoper.com. And uh, if you want to go on, download the app and uh, go and do the promotion section of the app. You can enter in the code FREE10, F-R-E-E-10, -E and uh, get 10 bucks on us to try it out. We'll Scott, check it out. Scott, Hunley, Oprah, brilliant. So thank you very much. Check us out on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram, and drop us a line at the Daily Mix at stltv.net. We want to hear from you, of course. That is it, gang, but keep it right here on STL TV and experience St. Louis. Peace. See you next time. Thank you, guys. Scott, awesome.